Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Versi Adams. I'm here to talk to you about AS9100D, Clause 8.5.4, Preservation. So, preservation of products shall also include, when applicable, in accordance with specifications and applicable statutory and regulatory requirements, provisions for A, cleaning, B, prevention, detection, and removal of foreign objects, C, special handling and storage for sensitive products, D, marking and labeling, including safety warnings and cautions, E, shelf life control and stock rotation, and finally, F, special handling and storage for hazardous materials. On the following slides, we're going to address all of these clauses. Okay, so in terms of Clause 8.54, Preservation, Subclause A, Cleaning. So in your manufacturing operations, you want to have a process in place where the product is constantly being cleaned at every work cell that touches a product. And you also want to make sure the work cells themselves are constantly being cleaned. This is going to help you um, lower the risk of FOD, foreign object and debris, by having this clean-as-you-go process in place. You also want to have, as a constant reminder, you want to have posters posted throughout your facility in those applicable areas where clean as you go is very important. 8.54 Preservation Subclause B, Prevention, Detection, and Removal of Foreign Objects. So FOD could include any objects or items that create hazards in the workplace if left in a place where they could damage equipment or injure individuals. The more common types of FOD include trash, soda cans, tools, screws, nuts, bolts, latex gloves, safety goggles, and rags and towels. All right, now let's move on to subclause C, special handling and storage for sensitive products. So depending on your manufacturing environment, you're going to have special handling and storage requirements for sensitive product that you move throughout your manufacturing facility from work cell to work cell. The very first photograph shows an example of a small circuit board being stored in an ESD protective box. And in the second photograph, you see a larger circuit board being stored in an ESD protective bag. The third photograph shows a woman storing epoxies and chemicals and resins in a chamber specifically designed to store that, that um, chemical epoxy and resin at certain temperature levels and certain humidity levels. Oftentimes, when you outsource product, the product is going to come with documentation that specifies what the shelf life recommendations are. So it's very important that when you get that information with the product that you pay attention to the storage requirements. Okay, moving on to subclause D, marking and labeling, including safety warnings and cautions. So it's very important that you always ensure that product labeling includes the required product information, as you can see in the example photograph to the very far right. You also want to ensure that proper labeling and handling labels are utilized. In these, ex in these examples, you see flammable liquid label, you see the organic peroxide label, and you see the flammable solid label uh, adhered to these packages. You also see the, the common double side up arrows, which indicates this side up for handling of the package. Okay, so shelf life control and stock rotation. So as consumers, we know shelf life is an expiration date uh, stamped on a bottle of mayonnaise, pickles. In this case, the first image is an expiration date stamped on a carton of eggs, which has a date of June 7th, 2023. So today being June 28th, 2023, we probably would not want to use that. We probably would not want to um, use that those eggs for cooking. Now, when it comes to manufacturing, the, the next three images being the second image is a top of a bottle, bottle of coolant with a due date of June 6, 2020. Same thing today being June 28, 2023. If this bottle of coolant was in your stock, you would not want to use it. The third image is a bottle of medical grade reagents with a batch number, a manufacturing date, and then an expiration date of 2023. Again, same thing today being June 28, 2023. This is in your stock, you would not want to use it. And the last image is the back of a bottle of Loctite 242 with a, um, a lot number stamped on there, L32 
CAA138389, and an expiration date of March 24, 2022. Again, today being June 28, 2023, you would not want to use this product in your manufacturing. 8.54F, Special Handling and Storage for Hazardous Materials. So it's very important that you understand the handling and storage of the hazardous materials that you have in your manufacturing environment and that you clearly label and handle hazardous chemicals and materials in accordance with the specified safety procedures that are specified by HAZMAT, OSHA, etc.